and as I came here, one thing I desired is that, Lord, let your will be done. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, sometimes we get used. Inakuwa ni kama ni kawaida tu. It's just Monday fellowship. And sometimes we may get used. But if there is something we should never be used to, it's the presence of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And so every time we come to the presence of God, let our heart form a habit of expecting something new from God. Praise the name of the Lord. Because God, is his understanding is so wide that we cannot be able to get it all. Today I was speaking to somebody about Moses. And the way Moses was brave enough to even tell God, if you are not going to forgive these people, take away my name from the book of life. And as we were sharing, I said, for him to have such courage, he had to make a guy. Because even God was giving a testimony and saying, what, to my servant Moses, I talked to him face to face. Praise the name of the Lord. They had such a deep relationship that even when it was time for Moses to die, the Lord spoke to him and told him, come up the mountain, you die. <laughs> that is how deep, intimate their relationship was. Praise the name of the Lord. And so when it came to Moses interceding for the children of Israel, he was able even to negotiate with God on their behalf. And when we were discussing that, I felt that we still have a long way to go. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know whether you feel that way, but I feel that I still have a long way to go, to get into such an intimate, deeper relationship with God that I can even tell the Lord, blot out my name. You know, he knew that there is no way God would not choose to blot out his name. Praise the name of the Lord. And I pray that every time we come into the presence of the Lord, may we desire to hear something new, to know more and more of him. Praise the name of the Lord. I want us to share the word of God. Last time I shared, I, wa I we were talking about the blind man who Jesus healed. His name was Batphias. I think, Pastor, by then you were here. Amen. And today I want us to share about a woman who had an issue of blood. Praise the name of the Lord. I've been doing a study in my personal time. I've been doing a study of the miracles that Jesus performed and the people that Jesus encountered and how they received their miracles. Praise the name of the Lord. And today I want us to look at that woman who had an issue of blood. And we're going to read from the book of Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. We're going to start from verse 24. Let me start from verse 21 so that you understand that this woman, when he, she encountered Jesus, it was not her time to be healed. Jesus was on the way to heal somebody else. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says from verse 21, And when Jesus was passed over again by sheep unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was near unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And he besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. I pray, come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And verse 25, the Bible says, And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood for 12 years, we are not even told about her name, we just told a certain, a certain woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians. This woman had suffered many things, and not only that, many physician, meaning that every doctor had instructions on what she's supposed to, to do. Every doctor came with his own formula. And the Bible says that she suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. Even after suffering many things of many physicians, this woman, instead of getting better, she grew was meaning her pain continued her flow of blood continued when she heard when she had heard of jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment 
For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straight away, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and says, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what, she, what, what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I want us to read the book of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 15, so that we understand what kind of a life this woman was living. So that we may understand the magnitude of this miracle and what happened to her that day. Leviticus chapter 15, I'm going to start from verse 19. Are you there? Leviticus, Maudoma, Alawi. Verse 19 says, And if a woman have an issue... And her issue in her flesh be blood. She shall be put apart seven days. And whosoever touches her shall be unclean until the evening. And everything that she lies upon in her separation shall be unclean. Everything also that she sits upon shall be unclean. And whosoever touches her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water. And be unclean until the evening. Verse 25 says, And if any woman have an issue of her blood many days out of the time of her separation, or it run beyond the time of her separation, all the days of the issue of her uncleanliness shall be as the days of her separation. She shall be unclean. Verse 27 says, And whosoever touches those things shall be unclean, and shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The reason why I have led Re Leviticus, I want you to understand the situation of this woman. Remember, because once you touch them, you become unclean. Praise the name of the Lord. Sure of blood for how many years? For how many years? For 12 years, meaning that all the years that she had this issue, she was living in isolation. She was living in separation. Nobody was allowed to touch her because the moment you touch her, you become unclean. Praise the name of the Lord. So I would imagine that if this woman developed that issue when she was a mother, she could not touch her kids anymore. She had to live in separation. She could not be touched by her husband anymore. She had to live in separation. Praise the name of the Lord. And not only that, even the villagers or wherever she was staying, it was something that is known. It had become a stigma. Everybody knew that that woman is unclean and nobody should touch her. And so you try to imagine if she had children, she could not hug her children. Praise the name of the Lord. If she had friends, her friends would not even come near her. It was a life of total separation. It was a life of total isolation. And because nobody wants such a situation to continue, the Bible says that she sought help. She went to many physicians. She went to this doctor after this one, after this one. And every doctor she had to pay. Praise the name of the Lord. So she was not only separated, but she also suffered loss of her finances. She sold everything that she owned. So this disease or this issue left her separated and left her in poverty. Twelve years. And I was trying to do some calculation and see when we talk about twelve years, we are talking about 4,383 days. When we talk about 12 years, we are talking about 144 months. When we talk about 12 years, we are talking about 624 weeks. When we talk about 12 years, we are talking about 105,000 hours and 192. It's a long time. 
for somebody to live in isolation. It is a long time for somebody to live in pain. Praise the name of the Lord. Because the Bible says that her pain grew worse. It did not improve because she went to a doctor who told her maybe you are supposed to use mirubaine. Or maybe another doctor told her you can bathe with their salts. Praise the name of the Lord. Because every physician had a way of dealing with that. Praise the name of the Lord. But for 12 years, she suffered emotionally. She suffered psychologically. And she suffered even financially because she remained poor. Until one day, she had. Amen. Every miracle that we have been, I have been studying in the word of God, I understand that it starts by the seed of faith. Because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. This woman heard about Jesus. This woman heard that Jesus can heal her. Praise the name of the Lord. She heard people talking about Jesus. Maybe she was living, I was trying to imagine, maybe she had a house that at, at, at the corner of the field, at the corner of the compound. But maybe people as they were passing by, coming from one of the crusades of Jesus, they could talk and say, did you hear? Did you see? Jesus healed a blind person. Jesus healed a deaf person. Did you see that lame person walk? Praise the name of the Lord. So she heard that Jesus can heal her. And I urge you, every time because of the expectation you have for the law, it is good to determine what are you hearing. Praise the name of the Lord. The ears are the gateway to the heart. You only believe what you hear. And it is high time for us to determine or to choose what are we hearing. Amen. Ask your neighbor, what are you hearing? No matter the situation that you're going through, you can hear all the negatives. People will tell you it has never been done. Oh, you're trusting God for such a miracle. It has never been done. Even this woman, she had not had somebody who was healed of the issue of blood. But she had heard that Jesus had done some other things, had performed other miracles. She heard that Jesus could heal her. Praise the name of the Lord. And she decided, what do I have to lose? After all, I have lost everything. After all, I don't even have money. After all, I don't even have friends. After all, nobody can even come near me. What do I have to lose? The Bible says that she spoke to herself. Amen. She was in that situation that she didn't have even somebody to encourage her. She didn't have somebody to fellowship with. She didn't have somebody who can devise a strategy together. Praise the name of the Lord. And so what did she do? She decided to speak to herself. She said, this is what I am going to do. If only I can touch the hem of his garment, then I will be healed. Praise the name of the Lord. From where we have read, she was not told. She spoke to? She spoke to herself. It comes to a point when we have to speak to ourselves concerning the situations that are troubling us. Praise the name of the Lord. Like this woman decided, this is what I am going to do. I will not be stopped. I will not stand here and remain here and die. I am going to do something. I am going to meet this Jesus. I may not be able to get to him face to face because I'm not even allowed to be where people are. But there is something I can do. If I can touch the hem of his garment, then I will be healed. And one thing I was thinking about this woman, for her to touch the hem, that means she must be crawling. She could not touch a hem while standing. She had to humble herself. She had to go down. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says that Jesus was surrounded by many people. So when they are busy talking with Jairus, when they are busy talking with the disciple, this woman on her knees, she is crawling past the people. And she touched the hem of his garment. And as she had declared, it happened. Praise the name of the Lord. When we talk about faith, we can only receive the desired results that we have confessed already. And that is why the Bible says in Mark 11 verse 24, that whatsoever you pray in my name, believe that you have it and you shall receive it. Amen. Believing comes before receiving. Tell your neighbor, believing comes before receiving. Amen. She believed that if I touch the hem of the garment, I will be healed. She believed it before she touched. 
Hallelujah. She believed it even before she came from home. After speaking to herself when she started the journey, she believed that the moment I touch, I will be healed. And so when she touched, whatever she had believed is what that came to pass. Praise the name of the Lord. And if there is something that has hindered many of our miracles, it is because we want to believe when we see. Hallelujah. We pray. We fast. But we do not believe we have it. Because we want to see so that we believe. But believing comes before receiving. Amen. If you don't remember anything else tonight, just write that down. That believing comes before receiving. And that is why Jesus said, when you pray, believe that you have it and you shall have it. How do you believe? How do you show that you have believed? You start even giving thanks. Amen. You start taking a step. Amen. If she did not believe that something is going to happen, she would have just sat her back at home. But because she believed that something is happening, she took the step. Praise the name of the Lord. When we believe, we act according to that faith. Because the Bible says that faith without action is... Is dead. You may believe. The Bible says in the book of James, you may believe and believe and believe. Even the devil believes and trembles. Amen. Amen. But that faith does not do anything any good to him. So believing with your heart and saying, I believe, I believe. Amen. 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 It is not enough to just believe. You need to take a step. This woman took a step. She went and touched the hem of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. And when she touched, the Bible says that virtue, amen, virtue came out. Virtue came out. There is a way you can touch the Lord. And virtue comes out. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Even when we come and gather our, ourselves in worship, in a place of worship, there is a way you can touch the Lord and virtue comes out. There were so many people that were touching Jesus. The disciples were there trying to be the bodyguards, making sure that Jesus is not touched. And when Jesus said, who touched me? They wondered, Jesus, everybody is here pushing. Everybody is touching you. But Jesus was not referring to every touch. He was referring to a touch of faith. Because when a touch of faith touched him, virtue came out. And I, this is my prayer. That when we gather in such a place, that we, we are going to humble ourselves like that woman. Go down. Amen. Touch Jesus in a way that virtue will come out. In a way that Jesus will recognize somebody has touched me. Or in that Monday fellowship today, as we were praying, somebody has touched me. Because virtue has come out. Praise the name of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, may you touch Jesus in a new way. In our worship. In our prayers. In our giving. Praise the name of the Lord. There is a way you can give and the Lord be touched. We are told about a man by the name Cornelius. This man did not even know about Jesus. But he used to be a giver. Praise the name of the Lord. His giving was so unique that it attached to the Lord. And God had to send Peter and say, go to Cornelius. Because his prayers and his giving has touched me. Praise the name of the Lord. In our service to the Lord, let it be a way that you're doing it. You're serving the Lord until he is touched. It is not about what people are seeing. It is not about the standard that has been set by men. Praise the name of the Lord. Because sometimes we come and worship according to the standard set by, by people. Amen. You may say in Monday Fellowship we don't play loudly. Amen. Or we don't sing and jump, jump. Amen. Because somehow there is a standard that has been set by men. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. When you come before the presence of the Lord, let us come with a great expectation. Let us come determined that I have come because I want to touch Jesus. 
and I want to touch him in a way that virtue will come forth. The same way the Bible talks about Solomon. When he became the king and he, he prepared the, uh, the, the sanctuary was ready. When it was time to give, he gave so much sacrifice. He gave so much sacrifice. The presence of God came down that even the priest could not be able to stand. Everybody fell down and they were all worshipping. And at night God appears and says, the sacrifice you gave hey, has made me come. You gave a sacrifice. You didn't say what you want. What do you want me to give to you? Praise the name of the Lord. May we get to such level that our worship touches Jesus. Our worship makes Jesus feel that virtue has come forth. That we don't have to struggle to get miracles. The Lord is the one saying, I am going to reward you. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says in Hebrews 6 that without faith it is impossible to please God. But everyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. When you diligently seek him, he is not like a man that he should lie. He is not a man that he can be mocked. He sees our seeds of worship. He sees our faith and our actions. Praise the name of the Lord. I pray today that some of us today here are going to experience that virtue that comes from the Lord because you have touched him. You touch him with your worship. You touch him with your prayers. You touch him with your giving. You touch him with your righteous living. Praise the name of the Lord. Just like he was touched by the life of Job. Amen. You know, somebody lives righteous until the devil goes to try to report him in heaven. You know what, God? You think he loves you? It is because you have blessed him so much. And God had the confidence of telling, uh, telling the devil, go touch. Because he knew deep down in his heart, this guy does not love me because of what I have blessed him with. Praise the name of the Lord. I pray that we are going to get to that level where virtue can come from the Lord just because you have touched him in a unique way. You have touched him with a revelation. You have touched him by faith. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So this woman said, if only I can touch him. And when he touched, when he, she touched him, virtue came out. As I was reading today, the Lord gave me a revelation. This woman did not want publicity. Amen. She knew a miracle has happened. She stepped back and she was on her way home. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. We don't see her trying to stop Jesus and say, Oh, Jesus, she was hiding. She wanted to run away and go back home and now start the process of the cleansing because she knew she was healed. But Jesus did it for her. Jesus said, somebody has touched me. This woman came and fell and worshipped at his feet. And Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. You know why Jesus had, did that? Because it was known in the whole village that this woman is separated. This woman is unclean. Praise the name of the Lord. As I was reading that verse today, I said, oh Jesus, I love you because you make it easy for those who seek you. They do not need to advocate for themselves. You can advocate for them. She did not need to go to the television and say, now when you meet me, do not fail to touch me. Do not fail to hug me because I'm no longer unclean. She did not need to call a village meeting. She did not need to go to the priest to say, now I am clean because Jesus made the declaration there and then. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. She did not need to defend herself. Jesus declared before everybody. Her shame was known all over and her glory was revealed all over. The Bible says in the same place that you are ashamed, in the same place that they said you are not mine, it is in the same place that they shall say, this is the servant of the most high God. 
And I have come to speak to somebody today who has been silenced because of the shame, who has been silenced because of what you're going through, that you cannot even give a testimony to your brothers and your sisters because they know where you have come from. They know what is troubling you. They do not even believe in your God. When the Lord shows up for you, when virtue comes out, you don't need to tell them that look and see what the Lord has done because the Lord will advocate for you. Praise the name of the Lord. And it is my prayer today that the Lord is going to advocate for us. That we are going to stop this battle. A time is coming when we touch him. When virtue comes out, you don't need to keep telling people when I guy. I don't know how much I'm going to do. I'm going to do it. 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 I pray that such a season is coming in the name of Jesus. When I listen to such statistics that Pastor Njoroge has said, it makes my heart feel so, so down. Praise the name of the Lord. But of which it is very true. 0.09% are the people who read the Bible in New England. Chattanooga leads in the people who read the Bible. They have 85.7% of the people who read the, the Bible. And somebody said that we are in a cold state and it became cold spiritually. <laughs> it is sad. Amen. But I believe that there is going to be a shift. I believe that there are people who are going to touch Jesus and virtue is going to come forth. And that statistic of my students is going to change for the glory of God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And I pray today that each and every one of us will have a desire to touch the Lord in a unique way. To touch the Lord with a revelation. To touch the Lord by faith. That virtue is going to come forth in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. The last verse, verse 34 said, He said unto her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. Mark 16 verse 15 says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be condemned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And verse 20 says, And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the words with signs following. Praise the name of the Lord. As I was preparing to speak this word, the Lord cautioned me in my heart that why is the Lord going to raise you from that frustration? Why is the Lord going to do a new thing in your life? It is not for yourself to keep. Praise the name of the Lord. But it is for you to go and spread forth. If there were no people who had spoken about the goodness and the greatness of Jesus that this woman could have had, she would not have received her healing. It's the name of the Lord. And we are living in an era where God does something and you just keep quiet as if it was nothing. The Lord performs a miracle. You are trusting God to, for healing. The Lord heals you and you assume it's like you are right. It's like you needed that healing and there is nothing else you're supposed to do. Praise the name of the Lord. You stand in the gap. You're praying for your family members to be born again. They receive Christ and you just keep quiet with it. You are trusting God for a job. The Lord provides you with a job. But you don't even remember to come and tell the pastor you are praying with that. I got, I got a job. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says in Revelation that they overcame by the words of their testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. If there is something that the enemy has taken away from the Christians today is testimonies. When was the last time you gave a testimony? Does it mean that the Lord is not doing anymore? 
Praise the name of the Lord. We, we, we get that chance. We get that opportunity. I love fellowship because that's where we grow. Amen. We get the opportunity every Monday here. Oh, who has a, who has a testimony? And we look at each other. Amen. Hallelujah. We look at each other. But I remember there were days when it was time for testimony, people were running. Because they don't want to keep quiet. They want to talk about what God has done for them. Praise the name of the Lord. We have been commissioned by the Lord. When he does it for you, don't keep quiet. Go and tell the others. Because when they hear your testimony, they will trust God for their situation. In Jesus' name. Let's stand on our feet. Hallelujah. I want you to just go before the Lord and talk to the Lord and tell the Lord this is your desire because this is my desire that I will get to that place when I come to worship him, when I come to seek him, when I come in his presence, that I'm going to touch him in a unique way. That virtue will come forth. That virtue will come forth in a way that I don't need even to tell people about it. That Jesus himself will advocate for me and when he does it and I receive a miracle, I will not keep going with it. I will go telling everybody that this is what the Lord has done for me. I was sick and I am healed. I was down and how he has uplifted me. Just open up your mouth and tell the Lord to help you. If you have been shy of sharing the goodness of God, tell the Lord to give you the spirit of boldness. Tell the Lord to give you the spirit of courage that you may be able to go and share. That you may be able to tell the others of what God has done in your life. Father God, we bless you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. We surrender to you, King of our glory. We surrender to you tonight, King of our glory. This is our desire, O oh Lord, that we may be able to touch you, Lord. That we may be able to touch you with a touch of faith. That we may be able to touch you with a touch of revelation. That we may be able to touch you in a new way, King of our glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Concerning everything that we are trusting you for. Concerning everything that we have professed faith for, O oh God. I pray tonight, Jehovah, let that woman touch you in the name of Jesus. I pray tonight that let that man touch you in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, may you hear the touch of the lady in the name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, for those that are sick right now. Let them experience your hearing right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare the virtue of healing is coming down upon them right now in the name of Jesus. Those that are discouraged, let the virtue of encouragement come upon them right now in the name of Jesus. Those that are almost giving up, we declare new beginning in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord God Almighty, those that are trusting you to make a new way for them, may you open doors for them right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your doing a new thing, oh God. We thank you for your doing a new thing, oh God. We thank you for your doing a new thing, oh God. We give you glory, we give you honor and adoration. And we declare in the name of Jesus. That you're going to grace us with the spirit of boldness, O oh Lord. That we're going to continue speaking your word, Lord, in our places of work, in our families, O oh God. Wherever we shall be, we will continue sharing the gospel, Lord. We cast away the spirit of fear and intimidation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We cast away the spirit of discouragement right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And we declare that we shall proclaim your word with boldness, O oh God, in the mighty mighty name of Jesus. And just like you are with the apostles, Lord, and you went about confirming the words that they spoke, we declare that as we go out and proclaim the gospel, you shall confirm your word, Lord, for you have promised to be with us until the end of ages. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. Amen, amen and amen. May the Lord God bless you.